Well, I recently pulled into a Tesla supercharger near Oxford and a Tesla service engineer happened to be there when I arrived. We had a chat and learned several things I didn't know, nor had I even thought about them. Hi, I'm Dave. Welcome to Dave Takes It On. The engineer had his car parked across several charging bays and two of the chargers were covered up, blocking them from use while he worked. He did stop when I approached him. We had a discussion for maybe four or five minutes before he headed back to continue his work. Well, the first thing I learned, Tesla monitor all supercharger sites and individual chargers. If a car fails to take a charge, it is instantly reported back to Tesla, but no other action is taken. If a second car fails to charge at the very same charger, it now produces an action report, notifying service engineers that there may be a problem, but it might not yet request a service engineer to visit. A third failure will definitely trigger an urgent service request. The response time will vary partly on how busy the supercharger is, i.e. are there plenty of other working chargers, but mainly on where the service engineers happen to be. Repairs are normally completed the same day. Charges being out of order for days or weeks at a time simply never happens. Now the cabin that the engineer had opened didn't look electrical to me and he confirmed that. I have a Tesla Model S with the premium connectivity package which offers 4G, satellite mapping display, Netflix, YouTube, internet, online gaming and more. New Teslas usually have one month free trial after which it's $9.99 a month. It's not essential, you can use your mobile phone as a Wi-Fi hotpot and these services will be available. But it is more convenient, especially if you have limited data in your phone package. Now, when a Tesla pulls into a supercharger, the connectivity, which out on the road must be provided by a SIM card and the mobile network, switches to the site Wi-Fi, giving a very much better, more powerful signal. The engineer was upgrading the existing 3G Wi-Fi network for that site to 4G. Constant upgrades, even if we don't ask for them or even know they're needed. Well, all Tesla cars are monitored continuously and tracked by proprietary charging software. So the Tesla, well, the software program, not only knows how many charges are in use, but also what's the state of charge of all the cars charging. From that, it can estimate how long it'll be till the next charger is free. If a supercharger is already completely full, it takes the data and then analyzes all the cars queuing analysing their state of charge and the charge limit set, and it estimates the length of time each car may have to queue. Obviously, it's not always deadly accurate. Sometimes I plug in and take a quick comfort break and a coffee, so I return to my car a uh, long time before it reaches the limit I've set. I drive off, but it is a superb feature. A quick word to all those ridiculous numpties out there who'll shout, well, I wouldn't let Tesla monitor my car. You don't know what they'll do with the data. I would just remind you that you carry with you everywhere, probably even into the toilet, a mobile phone which tracks your location every second of every day. And it also has a microphone capable of listening to every word you say every second of every day. If you have Siri or Alexa installed, your phone is already actually listening to each and every word you say 24 hours a day 365 days a year just waiting to admit it's listening only when you say Siri or Alexa to trigger it into response. My Tesla voice control must be activated by a button on the steering wheel I can choose or not whether I press it. At least that's what I choose to believe. Finally before I set off I always enter my destination let the car determine charging stops along the way if they're needed. Many times I've noticed that one minute I'm aiming for a particular charger only to have it change its mind and switch to a previous or later one on my route. This is sometimes done because my miles uh, uh, per kilowatt hour is actually better than predicted, but more often than not it's because the supercharger I was heading for was probably already full or would be by the time I got there. Well, my new destination is chosen for me would be less busy or even empty when I get there. This is how charging should be done everywhere. Well done Tesla, catch up you others.